a blessed day to everyone. First, um, I would like to thank Dr. Rowena Libuon and to the members of the panel headed by Dr. Mary Penetrante, Dr. Lucio Encho, Dr. Carmen Fernandez, and Professor Althea De Nuevo for giving me this chance to present my paper online. I would also like to extend my deepest gratitude to my advisor, Dr. Lenny Rose Mucho, for her continuous support and mentorship in finishing my thesis before my academic residency expires. So without further ado, I will be shifting my screen to slideshows to give you a better picture of my data. So my research is about the assessment of tourist destination potential in Kuyu Islands, inputs in developing an integrated Kuyu tourism development plan. So um, these are my agenda for today. First of all, um, I will give an over overview of the tourism sector in the Philippines, the importance of tourism in the country's economy, why there is um, a need to introduce more tourist destinations. Then I will discuss the purpose of this research, why I decided to conduct this research in the first place. Then I will deal with the method that I use to collect the data and to analyze the data collected before providing the results. So those results will also be discussed and I will conclude with some um, implications and recommendations of the research. As we all know, tourism is one of the biggest industries in the Philippines and it is a thriving industry. It's one of the main contributors in the country's GDP that made a 12.7% increase in 2018 compared with the previous year. The statistics also show that the number of tourist arrivals in the Philippines keeps on growing each year. In fact, 7.1 million foreign visitors arrived in the country in 2018. Well, um, tropical countries are always attractive to tourists in many ways. Palawan, for example, is the country's premier destination. So the Provincial Tourism Promotions and Development Department even reported a 21% increase in tourist arrivals in 2018. That is why there is a need to discover new destinations to accommodate the influx of tourists in the province. Cuyo is a group of islands located in the northern part of Palawan province and it is composed of 45 islands in islets and has an area of 33 square miles but the main island Cuyo has 22 square miles. It's a regular stopover along the ferry route between Iloilo City and Puerto Princesa City. There are also three municipalities, two of which are located in the main island. The population is around 35,000 and there are 28 barangays in total. There were already a few foreign visitors traveling to Cuyo over the years to play kiteboarding, but this is not sufficient to say that Cuyo has a tourism potential. This is why I chose this area as the focal point of my study. So jumping into the purpose of this research, the aim of this research is to develop a better understanding of the current situation of the tourism aspects in Cuyo and assess its potential to be the next tourism destination in the province of Palawan. Specifically, my objectives are to identify the places in Cuyo and Magsaysay that have tourism potential. Second, I have to determine the present condition of these potential sites in terms of their accessibility, services and amenities of accommodations and attractions. After that, my next objective is to evaluate the potentiality of Kuyu Islands as a tourist destination from the data that I have gathered during the conduct of this study. Lastly, the aim of this research is to find out the problems in the existing conditions of the sites and give recommendations for tourism development afterwards. So now let's move on to the methods, what I use to collect or gather my data and how I analyze them. First, I selected my respondents based on their tourism engagement in Cuyo. 
And then I also uh, I also wrote a letter to the mayors of Kuyo and Magsaysay to ask permission from their office to conduct surveys. So once it was approved, I started gathering my data. For the site evaluation, I worked with the tourism officer of Kuyo and we did an ocular visit to different sites. Since Magsaysay doesn't have a tourism officer, I have included the MDRRMO officer in my survey. So the respondents in my survey are composed of locals that have knowledge on the tourism aspects of the area. So that includes the community leaders, including transport agencies, business owners in tourism and hospitality industry, and tourists who were present during that time. A total of 25 respondents answered the survey questionnaire, and for a structured interview, um, only 17 Sangguniang Bayan members were available to participate in my interview. In total, there are 44 respondents who participated in my study. The site evaluation worksheet that we used is from the Tourism Guidebook of Department of Tourism. This worksheet showed the name of the municipality, site or attraction, site classification, and travel time to the site. The categories included uniqueness and natural beauty, historical or cultural value, accessibility, availability of basic utilities, availability of on-site facilities, ownership of property, and quality of surroundings. The sites were given scores from 1 to 5 based on their possessed characteristics, 5 being the highest while 1 the lowest. Then after that, um, I made a summary of the ranked list of the sites that have the most potential. To assess the present condition of Kuyu Islands, I collected my data from interview and survey questionnaire. Since not all Sangguni and Bayan members were present during that time, only 17 members participated. For the survey, I distributed 25 questionnaires to community leaders, business owners, and tourists who were present during my data gathering. After I have collected all the data from my site evaluation, interview, and survey, I started generating the data. I used the ranking method in my site evaluation to identify the sites with highest scores. And for the interview, I coded, I grouped similar kinds of information together and relate them um, or relate these ideas to one another. Lastly, for the survey questionnaire, I coded and ran in SPSS statistics to get the frequency, mean, and standard deviation. A SWOT analysis was then performed after all the necessary data were generated. And now let's jump into the results of my research. For site evaluation, as you can see here, Kuyo Fort ranked first with 73 scores, followed by Miller School with 68 points, Kota with 67 points, Kapusan Beach with 62 points, Acero Park with 60 points, and then other tourism sites that also received high scores are Casiledan Lagoon with 57 points, Purantok with 56 points, Batongkuyo with 53 points, as well as Suba Stone Breakwater with also 53 points, and Balay Kuyunun with again 53 points, Kokoro Lagoon with 52 points, Siparay Island with 52 points as well, and lastly, Mount English with 50 points. So these tourism sites that I have mentioned met the criteria formulated by the Department of Tourism. Um, as shown in this table, 7 out of 13 tourism sites are actually historical sites. So in the next slide, I will be showing you the top 13 attractions from our site evaluation.
The list of tourist attractions in this table is based from the response of the locals and tourists who participated in the survey questionnaire. So as you can see here, kiteboarding ranked first with 15 points, Kapusan Beach ranked second with 9 points, trekking or hiking ranked third with 5 points, followed by swimming and island hopping with 5 points each. I will be showing you the photos of these attractions in the next slide. This table shows the assessment of the current situation of Kuyu Islands in terms of accessibility. So the interpretation of the weighted mean here is moderately accessible. So as you can see, three indicators have interpretation of moderately accessible and the fourth indicator here has an interpretation of less accessible. The next table is the assessment of Kuyu Islands in terms of the accommodations. Or the available accommodation so all in all the overall weighted mean is interpreted as highly available that means the accommodations are highly available in Kuyo Islands this table is the assessment of Kuyo Islands in terms of attractions so in attractions the overall weighted mean here is interpreted as highly available as well all indicators are actually interpreted as highly as highly available now let's move on to the summary of the assessment of the present condition of Kuyu islands in terms of their accessibility their accommodations and attractions so as you can see here the overall interpretation of these indicators is high potential meaning Kuyu island has a high potential in terms of attractions accommodations and accessibility for the assessment of tourism potential in Cuyo based on the perception of the municipal officials, the accessibility is indeed a drawback for the island since average duration to reach the island is 11 to 16 hours by sea travel. The officials also suggested to have a direct flight from Cuyo to major cities and vice versa like Manila, Puerto Princesa City, and Iloilo City so that tourists will not hesitate to explore Cuyo and other nearby islands. Also, the allocation of additional tourism-coded vehicles like tourist vans, tricycles, and outrigger boats is vital to accommodate incoming tourists. As for the accommodation, Cuyo only offers basic accommodations. The officials implied that all accommodations should be accredited and complied with the Department of Tourism standards. They also responded that new tourism establishments must be constructed to prepare for the influx of tourists. The local water systems on the islands like Kokoro Island, Tagawain Island and others must be given a priority. At present, both municipalities don't have tourism master plan and this must be initially formulated before they can request funding from the province. Trainings must also be conducted as the massive promotion of the islands will aid in the tourism preparedness of both municipalities. So the officials also agreed to the notion that sustainable tourism must also be encouraged to avoid exploiting their natural resources. It could be strengthened by the involvement of the community in preserving the environment as well as the culture of the entire island. So based from the results of the data that I have gathered and um, generated, so these are the strengths of Cuyo Islands. First is the availability of natural attractions. So Cuyo has numerous natural attractions that can also be developed into a tourism site. The second one is ideal for water sports activities. So it is also evident in the result of the survey that Cuyo is surrounded by water and therefore ideal for water sports. So it's, it's one of the leisure activities that tourists usually do when they are on vacation in a tropical country. The next one is high historical and cultural value. 
So it's Cuyo is the oldest town in Palawan with a culture of its own, which has been preserved for more than 350 years. The next one is the proximity of attractions to the town proper. So based on the results of the data, most of the attractions that are included in the top 13 attractions based from the, the site evaluation, most of the, the top attractions are near the town proper. So these are the opportunities for Kuyu Islands. The first one is expansion of off-road activities. Kuyu Islands is composed of 45 islands and islets with white sand beaches and clear waters. So aside from that, there are mountains and cultural heritage sites that can be can that can also be improved or can also be developed as a tourist destination. So this is an opportunity for Kuyo and Magsay side to offer other tourism activities other than water sports. The next one is growth in tourist demand. So the rapid growth of adventure tourism and nature-based tourism has increased in the past years. So I believe that it will still it will continue to grow in the coming years with with proper planning and promotion. And then the next one is potential of East Asian market. So this is based from the well according to the Department of Tourism the international tourist arrivals in the Philippines increased by 20.81% in 2019 compared with the arrivals in 2018. And South Korea, Japan, and China topped the most influx of tourists, which means this is an opportunity for Kuyo to, to get recognition as the next tourist destination in Palawan. So it means East Asia has a massive tourist market and the money generating potential is very promising for Kuyo Islands. The next one is local tourist of higher income group. Since Kuyo has high historical and cultural value, then this is an opportunity to attract culture and heritage tourists because they are considered to be high spenders and they usually stay longer than other tourists. It's a great um, chance for Kuyu Island to attract this type of visitor in the future. The next one is the trend in sustainability awareness. More tourists now are aware of the sustainability issues and they begin to favor tourism products from business establishments that focus on sustainable production and operations. The next one is the employment of locals. So employment could also be could also be seen as an opportunity for Kuyo Islands. For example, um, Palawan State University in Kuyo is offering tourism and hospitality courses. So instead of them going to other cities to look for a job or look for job opportunities, then they can just stay in the island. There's no choice for them to look for tourism-related employment in Kuyo because there's no opportunity. That's why they have to live and work in cities where there is an opportunity for, um, for them awaiting. So the chances of these graduates to choose to work on the island will be favorable if there is tourism development or if, the, if Kuyo will be developed as a tourist destination. So now let's move on to the negative aspects. The first weakness is the telecommunication and internet reception. So this has always been one of the major problems in Kuyo. And um, tourists coming to the island may have difficulty in connecting to, to the internet. It could be a deciding factor whether tourists want to travel to Kuyo or not. The next one is proximity of surrounding islands. So there are islands in Kuyo archipelago that are distant from the main island. Some tourists might want to explore more of these islands, but they may not get the chance due to this constraint. So as shown here in the table, these are the islands surrounding Kuyo and their distance from the main island and the estimated travel time. The next one is the unavailability of air travel and other transport services. So at present, Cuyo is only accessible by ferry traveling to and from Manila and the cities of Iloilo and Puerto Princesa City. Next is narrowly focused. So like what I've mentioned before in the earlier presentation of my paper, the local governments of Cuyo and Magsaysay 
mainly focus on projects and community programs other than tourism. So even <clears throat> although the National Tourism Act of 2009 encourages the local governments to prepare a tourism development plan that they can implement, Kuyo and Magsaysay are not compliant in this area of concern. This only shows that um, these municipalities may not have sufficient knowledge about developing tourism in their respective areas. And lastly, the employment is seasonal, so seasonality is one of the downsides of tourism. Even if it will create jobs in Kuyo, these jobs will also be part-time, semi-skilled, and poorly paid, so it could be viewed as a negative impact on the local economy of both municipalities. For the threats, the first one is potential of existing competitors. So <clears throat> three of the top destinations in the Philippines are found in Palawan. Those are Coron, El Nido, and Puerto Princesa's underground river. So this could pose a major threat to Kuyo's potential visitors in the future. The next one is the terror threats in the country. So the Philippines has always been subject of several travel advisories following the clashes of government groups in Maute Group in Marawi this past few years. And also the pandemic that we have that we are experiencing right now could also be considered as a as a terror threat. It would affect it would affect tourism in Cuyo and also be viewed as a threat in the country. The next one is the potential threat of mass tourism. So this is the biggest threat to the environment. When tourism in ecologically sensitive areas like Cuyo is unregulated, the environment can be severely damaged and um, development can ultimately destroy tourists' main incentive to visit. The next one is economic downturn. So if there are unforeseen or anticipated economic recessions that could happen, would reduce the disposable income and um, threaten Cuyo's potential to develop. And last one is the social, cultural, environmental threats. So that includes cheap commercializations that tend to destroy the island life, and then the rising crime rates like theft, drugs, and prostitutions, invention of fake local culture that is adopted to satisfy tourists, and the admiration of tourist culture that weakens local culture. So with Cuyo becoming a popular tourist destination, the frequency of these tourists coming over could create a significant effect on the culture and social life of the locals. Now let's move on to the strategies based from the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats um, of Kuyo Islands. The first is the introduction of tourism products. So the introduction of tourism products other than kiteboarding can make Kuyo Islands more appealing to travelers. Other promising activities are island hopping, island expedition tours, historical and cultural tours, mountain hiking, and other water sports activities. The next one is market penetration and increased publicity efforts. Having a competitive rate could attract potential Asian markets in the future. And um, this could also increase the market share of Kuyo Island through greater marketing efforts to achieve tourism growth. So <clears throat> to increase publicity efforts, the municipality of Kuyo and Magsaysay should allocate funds for advertising expenditures. Social media, for example, is the cheapest medium nowadays to advertise products and services. They may invite popular travel vloggers or YouTubers with massive followings in social media. This um, strategy will significantly help the online presence of the local tourism in Kuyo Islands. And the next one is destination branding. So based on the data results, Kuyo Islands have high historical and cultural value. Um, it is also evident in the evaluation of tourism sites that 7 out of top 13 potential sites in Kuyo and Magsaysay are historical sites. And then 5 out of top 13 potential sites are either islands or situated on beaches. So I strongly recommend that Kuyo and Magsaysay should prioritize historical and beach tourism. The next strategy is product development and improve existing services. Kuyo Islands should not only focus on kiteboarding but also other water sports activities like windsurfing, sand paddleboarding, kayaking, and free diving. Historical and cultural attractions must also be encouraged like local festivals, culinary tours, and other related activities. Next is introduction of alternative tourism activities during lean season. So during lean season, the LGUs could introduce other water sports activities like free diving, scuba diving, 
snorkeling, and kayaking. The next strategy is the improvement of the general image by investment into IT and online presence. If the local governments of Kuyo and Magsaysay invest more money and resources into their online presence, they may benefit from it in the long run. And this could lead to higher sales and strong brand image that can also help their target market more quick quickly. Um, this can also be achieved with increased investment in information technology to develop an online website system. Aside from this, they could also create a Facebook page highlighting local tourism to attract more potential visitors. The next strategy is to improve guest satisfaction through better government intervention. So a sound government intervention or involvement could lead to a better tourism development in the localities of Kuyo and Magsaysay. Threats of tourism, mass tourism, and other social, cultural, environmental threats could also be eliminated once the government steps in and construct um, effective resolutions and ordinances to protect the community and satisfy the needs of the potential travelers in the future. So, Kuyo Islands as a tourist destination have an enormous potential to develop because of the beauty of its attraction, um, its services and amenities, and availability of tourist accommodations. So it is proven that the competitiveness of a destination depends not only on the quality of services, but also on built infrastructure. These tourism sites met the criteria formulated by the Department of Tourism, and seven out of the top 13 tourism areas are historical sites seconded by natural attractions. Therefore, the municipality of Kuyo and Magsaysay should promote their locality's tourism as a center of cultural heritage in the province of Palawan. Kiteboarding and Kapusan Beach ranking first and second implies that these two attractions are most popular as perceived by the locals and tourists. Therefore, Kiteboarding should also be included in the promotion of island tourism of Kuyo and Magsaysay. Kapusan Beach, on the other hand, should be developed as a kiteboarding spot in Palawan. Kuyo Island's main issue is its accessibility. It's crucial to say that this could be the reason why only few tourists prefer to travel to the islands. Therefore, a destination must have more transportation options to access Kuyo Islands. The services and amenities of accommodations in Kuyo Islands are also highly available and a significant part of tourism development. It is already proven that the availability of accommodation represents the image of a tourist destination. The services and amenities of accommodations in Kuyo Islands are also highly available and a significant part of tourism development. The attractions and activities are also highly available for tourism. Um, I strongly I strongly believe that the local governments should act in developing their tourism in their respective areas. It is already um, proven by some scholars that the government plays a vital role in tourism as it increases the competitiveness of a destination. A tourism master plan is needed to achieve this goal and they should also invite the provincial tourism board to develop an effective tourism plan for the entire community of Kuyo Islands. It's not only the sole responsibility of the LGUs uh, to plan for tourism, but it also includes collaboration between local government agencies like the Department of Interior and Local Governance, Department of Environmental and Natural Resources, the Philippine National Police, or the Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council, the transport sector, Coast Guard of the Philippines, and um, other sectors important in tourism planning. And my research revealed that historical and cultural sites top the list of potential attractions in Kuyo Islands. Therefore, I recommend that the local governments of Kuyo and Magsaysay should focus their branding in developing historical and cultural tourism in their respective areas. And also, the presence of islands and beaches could encourage other types of travelers. Therefore, Sun and beach tourism could be an added attraction to making Kuyo Islands more appealing to potential visitors. Um, accessibility is the main hindrance to the success of tourism in Kuyo Islands. Therefore, I recommend that the local governments of Kuyo and Magsaysay should enter a public and private partnership with airline companies like 
the Philippine Airlines, Cebu Pacific, Air Asia, and Air Swift to improve the transportation on the island. Negotiation on the reasonable pricing of the airlines is necessary to encourage more visitors in the future. It's also essential to call the, um, the shipping line's attention to discuss how they can improve their services because you know, speed and convenience are important for travelers, hence the accessibility will improve. All foreign travelers present during the instrument's distribution are found to be kite boarders from different parts of Europe and Australia. Some of these tourists have visited the island on a yearly basis. This may be because the island is suitable for water sports activities. If this foreign tourist can visit regardless of the complicated sea travel and expensive trips to reach their destination, this only shows that Kuyo Islands can attract more visitors if only there will be other travel options available for them. I also recommend collaboration between LGUs and telecommunication companies like Globe and Smart Communications to boost internet connectivity on the island. The availability of the internet is one of the factors that tourists consider when they travel and may also influence their satisfaction. Therefore, a reasonable internet speed should be made available to all visitors. I believe that Kuyo Islands could attract more visitors if only the local governments of Kuyo and Magsaysay improve its existing facilities because government intervention is necessary for tourism development. The accommodations should also improve their services and amenities to cater to the needs of tourists. If local investors are unavailable, the local governments could also invite venture capitalists to invest in Kuyo Islands. It will not only develop the destination, but also improve the local economy of these municipalities. Um, a destination will only develop if there is a strong support from the local government. So the LGUs and Magsaysay and Kuyo and other agencies should work together to improve tourism on the island. A tourism development plan must be formulated first, followed by establishing a tourism office and appointing tourism officers knowledgeable of this industry. The lack of coordinated activities is also one of the reasons why tourism could not flourish. Although there are significant efforts from the local tourism office to promote tourism, yet the lack of knowledge and planning are the most significant impediments in attaining a competitive advantage. And lastly, I suggest that they increase their market penetration and publicity efforts. It can be achieved by encouraging the participation of travel agencies in the Philippines to promote Kuyu Islands as one of their tourism products. Marketing and promotions are essential jobs of travel agencies. I believe this will give enough exposure to potential travelers and in return will boost the local economy of Kuyo and Magsaysay. So this ends my presentation. Thank you and have a good day.